Hello and welcome to video tutorial number nine. My name is Eamon Killian. I've been doing a short series of videos on how to get started using IBM's software as an infrastructure as a service cloud. Uh, to date in video tutorials one to eight, without wasting too much time on this video, we've registered, we've used the customer portal, we created and used virtual machines and object storage and flex images and then I've set up a VPN SSL tunnel and finally in tutorial 8 I set up um, and showed how to configure virtual network computing so you could have graphical access to your um, CCIs or virtual machines uh, within the software infrastructure. So that's all really handy and I guess that was a nice point to come to this video because Having graphical access to the actual machine itself using VNC is really, really handy and we can install packages and use the GUI and treat our machine as if it was almost a virtual box running on our um, local Mac here. But Unix people tend to use command line and quite often I want to do things really quickly. I don't want to have to log into portals. I don't want to have to you know, spend ages getting stuff done that is effectively a one-liner. What I would like is I'd like to be able to issue a command here, you know, do this for me on software, you know. Um, that would be really nice. So how do I do that? Well the good news is software have written a command line interface um, so that you can use their infrastructure and you can actually use the APIs underlying that um, to actually action or execute commands within the software infrastructure. So that's what I'm going to take you through in this tutorial is how do we actually get the software command line interface tool installed and configured so that we can start using it and then in the second half of this video I'm going to show you all the cool things you can do once you do have it installed. So first things first um, this is uh, one of my demo machines so I'm going to just check yeah, it's clean, it's a brand new machine, so it's got nothing really on here and there's no history, which is why I've moved to it for this tutorial, because I know I have many of the tools already installed on my one. Um, and we'll move back to mine in a minute. So, let's install it. It's dead simple. Um, we're logged on here, we're in a terminal window. Basically, the install is a pip install software. It's that simple. Um, and we don't have any pip. Okay, uh, so that's fine. So let's uh, install pip, uh, which is this. Okay. Yep, good. So I'm also going to, that reminds me, I'm just going to do a sudo minus i and then use the pip install um, software as root. Hopefully, yep, there you go. It's that simple. So we now have the software command line interface tool all installed. It's that quick. So we can now start doing stuff. But there is one additional step. We have to create a file that will contain our username and our API key so we can gain access to software. So I'm going to pause the video there, go back to my machine, but that's the basics of getting it installed on your Mac. Okay, so I'm back on my machine. Um, We've pip installed um, the actual software CLI. So I said just before stopping the video the last uh, minute ago, there is one final step to do, and that relates to actually running the commands here. So when we go SL, we can see that it's all installed and ready to go. Now one of the one of the common things is to have a look at something. So let's look at images. And if I go SL image list, and this is exactly what I expected. We get an error. 
we're not authenticating, we're not actually signing in to the APIs to run our commands. Now, how do we resolve this? Well, that's exactly what I'm going to show you now. So the last piece of configuration setup to get the software uh, command line interface working is to actually type sl config setup. Now, this is going to ask us for our username and our API key. So that's why I've logged in in the background here to our actual um, portal. So if I now put that down in the corner there, I'm going to make it the full width of the screen and we can see things happening. So um, to show you what that will be, if you go to account users, this will list your username and your API key we can have a view of in a minute. So if I snap back into here, and you go SL config setup, username, I might as well type it rather than uh, password or API key. Go back up to view, take that into your buffer, go OK, got it in my buffer now. I noticed this the last time. I have actually done a control V to place it in here, but it doesn't actually show a load of uh, characters going in, but I assure you it's in there. Um, endpoint, well, for, for the moment, for convenience, public, private, and custom. And that's it. It will ask you to verify. You say yes. Done. What's the difference? Well, when we go SL image list now, it will actually log us in and there are all of the images. Now if I scroll to the very top in tutorial two or three we created a flex image for a standard LAMP server and if we go right to the very top there is our standard LAMP flex image with a global identifier, and I'd previously created a WebSphere application server one. So there you go. That's how to get the last piece of configuration set up for our software command line interface. Now we have a command line interface. I'm going to stop it there, refresh the screen, and I'm going to show you some examples of what you can do with a really cool software command line interface from a Mac terminal. Uh, running on locally on my machine and I can integrate uh, sorry interface with uh, software ask it to do things retrieve information and this is starting to lay the groundwork for working a bit more deeply with the APIs okay so we've now successfully installed the uh, software CLI so uh, I guess it remains to have a look at what we can actually do with this thing. Um, what can we use it for? How useful is it? So I wanted to give some specific use cases. And um, I guess earlier on in the tutorials, we looked at creating a virtual machine, which was, you know, we logged into the portal here. We went to order devices. We ordered a device, filled in all the bits, and away we went. So. We're going to use the use case of create a device um, and we're going to look at the options around that just to show you how useful this is now. So if I bring up the terminal, okay, we can, and I'm actually going to slim this down now because we, you know, we'll go back in here in a minute. We can see, I just wanted to point out we have one device in here. And if I refresh the page, we can see we have one device. So let's go and create a device. So the first thing we need to know is, um, I've done it up there, is you can run SL VS create options. So it's the software um, CLI VS is virtual server, create options. And this returns us from the API a whole set of which data center, 
CPUs you can have if you're doing bare metal, uh, the memory, etc. And these are the OS, the specific operating system um, identifiers so that it will install CentOS 664 or Debian 632, version 632 bit, etc. Yeah, so you get the idea. Um, now this is the part of this, I guess, where I feel like I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. Um, if I slim that down again, I wanted to show you um, that you can get great information on the web and Softlayer have done a fantastic job of writing up on this link here how to use the command line interface and you can follow the working examples, the usage examples in here. Absolutely fantastic documentation. The other link I wanted to share with you was this one, which is well worth knowing about, which again provides more examples on how to actually use the software uh, CLI. Um, I'm going to go through the example of creating a server here. So let's, let's do it. So what we want to do is we're going to go software um, virtual server we're going to create one and then we need to tell it the host name so that's minus minus host and we're going to call it sassify4 um, the domain it's actually going to be in and, and if you watch these previous videos I've been using softlayer.com I might as well stick with that um, the computer, the cores, um, well let's just have one core minus M for memory, um, let's have 1024 um, the operating system which is this list here so I'm going to go with a CentOS because I have been so far in these tutorials underscore 6 underscore 64 bit Yeah, we're going to do it hourly hourly and then the final piece of information is what data center are we actually going to have this machine in. So to get the data center, again, the create options, <coughs> excuse me, the create options, Amsterdam 01, that'll do for us, AMS 01. So hopefully we've covered everything there and hitting return, this will incur charges, indeed it will, yeah. And there we go. So it has come back to me with created. There's our GUID, our unique identifier. And hopefully that will now do it. I've also had an email through from Software telling me that my order has been received. So let's go and look at uh, Chrome. Okay, and we'll go back to our customer portal and I'll just refresh. And there it is. There's Sassify 4 being created now. So you see, really powerful from the command line, I've created a new virtual machine. It's being built at the moment. Excellent. So that, that actually sets it up lovely. So I'm going to wait for that to actually finish. And then we're going to create one more virtual server. Uh, this time I'm going to show you how you use the flex image that we created earlier. So if you remember in one of the earlier tutorials, we um, manage images. We created a flex image. There it is there, standard lamp. So effectively you can do the action create here. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to use that flex image from the command line interface. Um, so we'll wait for the other servers, the other server to be finished. So I'm going to just stop it there and then we'll pick up how to create the next one.